I've always had a passion for hotels. It's a great opportunity to be able to craft something on your own. We're a very special collection around the world where the hotel itself celebrates the city's culture, its history, its heritage, which really resonates with kind of the next generation of travelers. I see myself as a target customer. I think it's all about trying to push the boundaries and be top in the market. The fullest expression of the brand has to be and is in Hong Kong. This room we are standing here tonight has been eight years in the making. That Hong Kong hotel is 100% her vision. I have a very special connection to this site because this is a site where my late grandfather created one of the most important landmark in the history of Hong Kong, the old New World Center. Every Hong Kong person uh, has some memory of spending time there. Having that whole area kind of transform and be kind of reborn for today was very, very exciting. My grandfather is a very special person. He's very inspirational and he's a role model for me and my family. We're extremely proud for her to be leading the Rosewood brand back to the home turf of Hong Kong. To have the opportunity to carry on his vision is an honor. I would like the guests to come here and say, wow, it's something special. And my only hope is that with the newest Rosewood Hong Kong here, we're able to create memories for the new generation. When I start working on this project, it becomes a very personal project for me. This is uh, a very special place in her heart. I lived with my family in the service apartment um, in the complex. And so there's a lot of childhood memories for me, including, you know, riding my bicycle for the first time. And we have sleepover parties with my cousins. We will gather with my grandfather in this location. Dr. Jane Yutong is a Hong Kong legend. Her grandfather and her father were working together. At the time, it's, it's called New World Development. They were the one that built Hong Kong. Sort of the 70s, 80s, they really began to develop the whole property side, the hospitality side. And that was when that very first New World Center appeared on the southern tip of uh, you know, the Kowloon Peninsula. We can say that you know we are the pioneer to build this kind of project. Watching her father, Henry Chang, run that hotel and develop that spot would have made a huge impression on the young Sonia. I would walk around the hotel with my father, you know, learning about, in, at that time, you know, firsthand what the hotel operation really uh, uh, looks like. You suck that in, you inherit that. Uh, maybe this reason why she so gravitated to hospitality industry, right? Because it's somehow, it's in that blood. After 14 years old, I went to boarding school in the States. I went to Taft in Connecticut, and that uh, was a completely different educational experience. It was typical of the Hong Kong, so what you call old <laughs> money <laughs> families. You know, they send their kids everywhere. They got really good education. Uh, Sonia's education in the U.S. Um, was extremely influential because it exposed her to new ideas and, 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 and new concepts. I uh, entered to Harvard, um, and I studied applied mathematics. When I graduated, I went into investment banking. I did a few years with Morgan Stanley and in real estate. And then after Morgan Stanley, I went into private equity and I worked for Warburg Pincus, both in New York and Hong Kong. In 2008, I wanted to do something that's completely different. Uh, and then at that time, my father um, wanted to start a hotel management business. The amazing thing about Sonia is that she obviously at a very young, young age uh, took the reign of, of this company. I think Dr. Cheng knew at that time he was grooming her for something big. People knew her from very early on and she had been in some way in the public eye. When I first started it was actually quite overwhelming because I didn't have a traditional hotel degree. But Sonia was a big risk. Young CEO, first time CEO. Everybody was expecting a bit of a flash in the pan. I spent the first two years literally um, you know, spending time in hotels and learning how different department works, including, um, you know, from housekeeping to human resources to sales and marketing to operations. It's self-taught as you learn through the process. This is not a Cornell Hotel School. This is the Chan Hotel School that she sort of learned 
uh, she goes. I think in Asia, traditionally, it's always been about the boys, but in today's day and age, it's a much more equal playing field, and it, it comes down to her family culture. I think they were very, very supportive. For someone who's from a quite a traditional big family, you, you see a lot that they really follow what their parents, grandparents uh, want them to do. She, she did that too, but then she really started to come into her own. It was in 2011 when Sonia acquired the Rosewood for 229 million. When we acquired Rosewood, it has a presence uh, of about 18 hotels, mostly in the Americas, uh, Caribbean, and, and Mexico. Rosewood is a, is a brand, of course, go way back in uh, good old America, Texas, and really exhibited uh, the Southern Comfort, what the American hospitality is about. With our uh, group's network in Asia, uh, internationally, uh, we believe that we're the perfect partner to bring Rosewood to become a much more uh, uh, global and international brand. What Sonia identified was the beauty of that brand and how she could move it forward and really kind of reinvent it. After Sonia acquired the brand, she set out on this rapid expansion plan to really take it to the next level. When I met her for the first time, the first question I asked, who are you going to build uh, that, that brand for? And she basically looked at me and said, for me. A lot of the, the kind of ideas that she wants to bring to hospitality, I think, are very, very international, and she's just wonderfully cosmopolitan. I travel around the world a lot. When you go to one hotel, it's the same as the other. There's a need of a brand that has a stronger point of view and a stronger uh, personality. Sonia saw a void in the market and said, hey, where do I want to stay? Where do my friends want to stay? She couldn't find the right answer, and so that's what she set out to do when she created this new Rosewood. First thing that we did was relaunched uh, Rosewood globally with an international campaign. The first new generation hotel, the Rosewood London first baby. People were very skeptical about the fact that it's not located where all the other luxury hotels are located. It's in Holborn. It's a location where it's very authentic. It was a heritage building that they refashioned. They invested over a hundred million dollars in this property. When you walk in, you've got all these incredible design details this beautiful marble geometric pattern floor. The suites are just super chic. When you're in your room, you still feel the same intimacy. For me, that's important, um, traveling so much that you feel familiar and you have intimacy in your space and it feels like your own. She totally transformed it, changed it and modernized it. Basically made something completely different yet treasuring the culture of, of the place, the heritage of the place. We went with our instinct and went with our gut that uh, we'll be able to draw the people to the location and become, make it a destination. Because the atmosphere was so cool, it was so inviting, Londoners all of a sudden wanted to go to the Rosewood for a drink. It opened a lot of doors. It really established Rosewood as a, a brand, not just an ultra-luxury brand, but a, a brand of style. And we believe that um, it, is, it is exactly uh, a brand that the next generation of travelers are looking for, a brand about experiences, uh, about discoveries. Rose of Beijing was another challenging milestone. We invested a lot in that project, and it was definitely not an easy uh, renovation. And we're essentially told all of the things that we couldn't do. Oh, no, no, no. Impossible. And Sonia just turned to them and she said, but that's what I want. There are often you know, preconceived um, notions about what um, you know, kids like us grow up in a well-known family would be. And, and there's a, always a sense of uh, urgency to kind of fight off that and, and, and do something different. A prominent family name like the Changs, it can be a double-edged sword because you have such high expectations of yourself high expectations that others put on you. There are not many women running businesses in Asia, or the world for that matter. 
That said, it's a measure of her competency that her father gave her this portfolio, and she's proven that she's up for the challenge. She's a name that represents the new generation uh, of these big families, but also took it to a new era. People knew she had the means to create what she had. I don't think they realized how determined she was, and I think people underestimated how innovative she is. She was tenacious, she had a vision, she just wanted to uh, just shake things up. The way we look at each hotel, we really try to understand the location first, and then we tailor-made every hotel to the needs. Mostly what you want to do is you want to embrace uh, the local sensibilities. Now, of course, Rolls Royce are always about the sense of place, and I think this Sunday Sony is very good at it. Why would you want to go to London, stay somewhere you could have stayed in Connecticut? And it's the level of detailing, the little um, accessories, the uh, things that you don't typically find in a, in a normal hotel that really give you that feeling that you're staying in someone else's apartment. It's not a cookie cutter approach. Um, we really want to um, uh, take the beauty of the city and weave it into the hotel. When we then opened Rosewood Beijing, it was truly a milestone for the, for the company because it was our first uh, venture in, in Asia. The Rose of Beijing was another challenging milestone. We invested a lot in that project and it was definitely not an easy uh, renovation. I saw the existing building and I thought, existing building, your aspirations. Two entirely different things. And then we learned about uh, this big project. We were wondering, well, what could they do? with that building, it had always been there. And that location was very familiar to a lot of people in Beijing and uh, trying to transform that building and uh, to create a destination for a brand that has no presence in Asia was quite a daunting task. We sat in this meeting and were essentially told all of the things that we couldn't do about how difficult everything was. Oh no, 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 impossible, won't happen. And Sonia just turned to them and she said, but that's what I want and that's what she got. It's not easy, you know, for a, a company or a family of that kind of size and that kind of tradition uh, to move very quickly. Sonia, you know, she has enough courage and conviction in what she sees is right and uh, to do it in today's world. I know Beijing quite well. And Beijing has a lot of different brands and different hotels, but what it lacks is a hotel that really speaks to the city, um, that resonates with the locals. One of the things that Sonia is really passionate about is food and connecting travelers to a city, to a destination through food culture. And so what she did when they opened Rosewood Beijing, she said, I don't want the traditional celebrity chef restaurant. We arrive with four restaurants, three of which are Chinese. And everybody went like, you, you need to open Italian, everybody's an Italian, you have to do an Italian. She went, I don't care, it's gonna work. We go for it. And so she created Red Bull, which is a traditional hot pot restaurant. So this is a style of eating that's been around in Chinese culture for 1,500 years, but no one had elevated and made a more formal hot pot restaurant. People love going to hot pot, but there's only places that are, um, you know, more casual restaurants out there um, uh, for hot pot, but nothing that is more stylish and more upmarket. You had people who were traveling to Beijing wanting to go just to that restaurant. You had locals coming in to dine there, and so. So it be became this buzzy, creative social hub in the, the hotel. It was an interesting moment because I would say at that time nobody saw us coming. Sonia's belief in herself as essentially the next generation of luxury traveller meant that it was in the end very successful. And success spread success. But then Paris, you know, Hotel de Crayon. <laughs> see right now the Creon is booming. It's become the darling of Paris. So to revitalize that property with such a strong history and uh, 
in people's mind, it's not easy. But at the same time, we made a lot of effort in uh, trying to weave in the Parisian culture in a subtle and more sophisticated way and celebrates the, the city uh, within the hotel. The hotel was closed for over four years because they really wanted to make sure that they were taking this landmark Parisian hotel into a new era. And they brought in six designers, including Karl Lagerfeld. Sonia was very intimately involved with working with Karl Lagerfeld's team to ensure that Karl is also able to extend his personality through this amazing suite that he created. I do get into the details and, and I need to pull back uh, in the future, I think. I get his decisions down to the uniforms that the people wear the scent of the amenities that they choose for the property, the concepts of the restaurants, because that's my passion. Many executives I work with, they say, well, you know, taste is not my thing, I'll leave it to somebody else. But in her case, well, she said, well, I want to know. I want to learn about taste. She will get involved in each and every uniform design, uh, in each and every tabletop, in each and every menu, in each and every detail of the interior design. What is it she doesn't get involved? I <laughs> mean, that's the question. Which part she doesn't want to get involved? Sometimes I say to Sonia, I say, Sonia, let me do my job. <laughs> She's got an amazing eye for detail and the attention that she has on, on everything. I mean, she really has, she has great taste, she's very sophisticated. Every room has its own personality, so I think Sonia has really added her touch in a very elegant and chic way. It's all through her lens, the design, the food. She is so exacting about her taste and her style. And when you check into a Rosewood, again, in Beijing, in New York, in Paris, it feels perfect for that environment. My father always tell me the hotel is a people's business and you need to spend time to invest in people and build relationships uh, because at the end of the day with other people you don't have the brand. She is extremely passionate about building teams and I think that's been to her strength. I know that I don't have the 20 years of experience in hotels and I, I tell the team up front that I need them to be a partner. She's making these really uh, impactful decisions, but she's doing it surrounded by people who have been in the industry for 20, 30 years. She's a sponge. She will, she will learn from everybody around her. That's how I build my team, and that's how I build my company, is investing in these relationships and to find professionals that, are, um, that have an aligned vision with me and, and have uh, the same passion. It really is about the people within her company, how they keep up her with her velocity. When she did the Tatler cover for Hong Kong Tatler, she told me, I don't want to just do another cover and I don't want to just be the, the cover girl. Said, so for me, it's about showing the team that I'm proud of. Even though you, ha you have a vision, you always have to make your team feel that this is part of their vision as well and give credit to the team. On Rosewood Phuket, she was a new mother. And so halfway through the design, there was all of a sudden this different focus. So at the end of the day, I think my family became an inspiration to me. Rosewood is the shadow of Sonia. You know, Cass Steven called it the moon shadow. We opened with um, Rosewood London, um, as well as Rosewood Beijing, our first Rosewood in Asia. And then after Beijing, we opened, of course, the Creon in Paris. We opened our first resort in Phuket. And then subsequently, more hotels in Asia, such as Luan Prabang, which has tented camps, Non Pan in Cambodia, and then leading up to Hong Kong, which was a, a basically a culmination of the entire journey of Rosewood and the most comprehensive expression of, of what we're trying to create for the brand. Rosewood is rapidly building, and they've got some amazing properties in the pipeline. Today we're at, uh, at 27, we've got 21 more unique destinations. Currently working on Rosewood in Brisbane, the first property in Australia. We're working on a hotel in Chengdu, Taipei, Guangzhou, and Houston. I think our growth is very selective. Um, it's very strategic. We take a very bespoke approach when we approach each of the hotels. 
before I had children, uh, I always believed that you know resorts should be just for couples. On Rosewood Phuket, she was a new mother, and so halfway through the design, there was all of a sudden this different focus. The next generation of travellers and people like myself, young families, they travel less uh, as couples. We visit places as a couple. We now visit as a family, and it gives her a different perspective. She's now setting out to provide young families a whole slew of experiences when they go to any properties. So at the end of the day, I think my family became an inspiration to me. She is the kind of uh, the guinea pig uh, for our Road to the Explorer program. So when we developed uh, Rose of Bouquet, we dedicated a larger ground for the kids' facility. It's not just about sticking them in a room and calling it the kids' club and parking them there for the day. They really want to get out and explore and explore the destination that they're in. There's you know, water play, herb gardens so that they can grow their own uh, plants. We have a tie weaving station um, that can teach them tie weaving, which the kids love. And she's a young mom and she knows. She knows her kids want to keep busy and want to keep active and they want to learn something. She is always making sure that her kids get the best. She stays so motivated, so excited. I don't know how she does it, she's got four kids. She's a very attentive mother, but at the same time, she's steering a behemoth of a hospitality brand. There are few female CEOs in the hotel world, and so having somebody like Sonia at the helm of Rosewood is really special and inspiring to many women in the travel industry. Women uh, have a very difficult choice to make, and she she has to deal with that on a daily basis. Um, I think she does that brilliantly. She is a, a role model for women like us who want it all and uh, are not afraid of uh, sac sacrificing uh, some parts of yourself in order to have it all. She's continually evolving, and therefore the brand is continually evolving. That's what makes it really interesting and will continue to make it interesting. It's dynamic. Rosewood is the shadow of Sonia. You know, Cat Steven called it the moon shadow. Uh, and I see the moon shadow, which is Sonia, which is Rosewood. So wherever there's Sonia, you see the shadow of Rosewood. She really wants to uh, bring something valuable to uh, the community and to the world, and in that she gets her sense of value for herself too. She's also, of course, very competitive uh, as a businesswoman, so I think competition drives her to go forward a lot. She's gone from re really having no kind of classic hotel training to being one of the preeminent minds in the hotel business. <laughs> I never want to stand still. Um, so every day, it's it's a challenge. Uh, you know, it's a people's business. So you you will get involved in so many different aspects of the of the space and from the of the business. Her uh, strength is is to be able to to balance, you know, dream and vision with operation and financial savviness. The secret to success is the sort of left brain, right brain thing. And it's the kind of confluence of those two things that has allowed her to be so successful so quickly. You know, when I entered to Harvard, I didn't want to uh, follow the general population of studying economics. I found a challenging route to study applied math. Uh, it's because I just don't want to be at the norm. And the same with building this brand and building this company is we want to be known as the most progressive and most innovative uh, hospitality company out there. She's proved the naysayers wrong because the brand is thriving and really exceeding so many others because of her vision. At the first meeting, you probably don't think, oh, she's a dynamic person because she's so personable, but once you get to see what she does and get to know her, you feel that energy inside her and uh, then it becomes very obvious. I love Sonia's story because she's a young woman that obviously is extremely smart and is able to apply who she is and what she believes in her integrity to the hotel world. Although she is mother of four children, but still the Rosewood is her baby and one of the best in the world. She created a big kahuna, my friend, right? In the hospitality industry. She's creating a legacy for, for the future. I mean, Rosewood today is a brand to be reckoned with. She's brave, 
to, to go to some place she doesn't know anything about. And how many of us can do that? I always think that you know the industry evolves so quickly. Uh, you need to continue to evolve as a company. You need to learn. We need to keep moving. We need to keep pushing boundaries and be the most forward-thinking company out there.